Hey everyone and welcome to Pro Mix Academy. My name is Carlo Libertini and you can tell by the smile on my face that I'm super excited about this video because here included with Studio One Pro are some amazing analog effects. I know what you're thinking, everything's digital these days and you're right, but at the heart and soul, what you're looking at here are true representations of some really cool analog gear. Question is, are you aware of them? Are you using them? So I thought in this video, we could dedicate some time to learn about this suite of plugins that's bundled with Studio One Pro. It's also available for sale, I believe, independently for to use in other DAWs. So that's also pretty cool. Now what's included is we have a super awesome analog delay here, uh, tricomp, we have a rotor, a chorus and a red light distortion and each one does something super cool and super amazing. And we're going to kick some tires with each one of them. Now, obviously, thanks to the, you know, the advent of digital, um, these plugins can do a little bit more than their original analog counterparts. And I have no problem with that. So let's dive right in. All right, let me close this one, this one. And let's start with the analog delay. Now, just looking at it, it is just beautiful. Um, what I think we should start with is basically understanding that this is kind of a, a really cool analog tape delay style, but has some advancements and modifications. You can see, for example, there's a frequency oscillator here. You can adjust the motor, the spinning of the physical motor effect. Uh, and then you've got color. You can adjust uh, the low cut and high cut for the delay, kind of tuck it in your mix that way. And of course, a wet dry. So I've got this on my vocals. Let's take a listen. Let me solo my vocals. And here I have it inserted on a separate effects bus. Have you got an ocean that you're crossing now? Is your compass all confused? Can you hear the wind? The storm clouds grabbing you. It's all now you're looking. Now, if you ever worked with tape delay before, this just gives me chills. It is so, it's scary accurate. Let's take a quick look at this. Now you get time. Obviously, you can adjust your time here with this rotary knob. You can also select the value here to choose from these integers, and you can sync it to your host tempo. And you also get your feedback here. And the boost will kind of boost the loudness of the feedback. So if you needed that for some reason, just boost it. And there you have it. Now, the LFO is great for some kind of special effects if you want it. For example, let's have a little fun with this. I'm going to increase the amount here. And you can choose the sine wave style. Have you got an ocean that you're crossing now? Is your compass all confused? Can you hear <laughs> the wind? The storm clouds grabbing you. It's so this is obviously more of a special effect, but if you use it creatively and surgically, it could also help give you some really sweet ear candy in your mix. So that would be the LFO. I'm going to hold my, my control on my Windows keyboard and click to set all these values to default. Have you got an ocean that you're crossing now? What's, I'll give you a tip here. What's really important is fitting it in with the low cut and the high cut. Maybe you don't want to send a lot of the low end weight energy. You could actually cut out, let's say about, I'm going to go aggressive here. Let's say well, about 209 Hertz. And I don't need to send a lot of the high end to prevent some maybe accentuated siblings or some kind of brashness that I don't need repeated often. Well, this is where you do it with the high cut here. And then the drive here obviously will boost that effect. All right, let's bring the drive up just a little bit. Have you got an ocean that you're crossing now? Is your compass all confused? Can you hear the wind? The storm clouds grabbing you. It's all now you're looking. Yeah, it sounds really sweet. Now, the motor here, uh, again, I would probably put this in the realm of creative effect. I don't really play with it much, but it's there in case you want to. So there it is right there. Now, more importantly, I think is the width. With the width knob all the way to the left, it is now mono. With it all the way to the right, 
It is now more stereo. Have you got an ocean that you're crossing now? Is your compass all confused? Because I have this on a stereo effects bus. And I can now adjust it. clouds grabbing you. It's all now you're looking. It's all in how you What's good about this, I feel, is that obviously being able to place your delays can help reduce some conflict with other musical elements in your mix. I often find that this is really good around 60%, 58, 59%. Have you got an ocean that you're crossing now? Is your compass all And then confused? last but not least, our wet dry. You could lock it or you could unlock it and play around a little bit. Have you bit. got an ocean that you're crossing now? Is your compass all confused? Can you hear the wind? The storm clouds grabbing you. It's all now you're looking. I love that. Really kind of thickens and spreads it out a little bit. You look. This makes a great vocal spreader where you want a little bit of oh, that vocal in you each take a ear. Time and dare to climb. A smear of it. It's all in how you look. And that would be the analog delay. Um, okay, so let's go next to our tricomp. Yeah, let's go there. Now, this is really cool. It obviously is a compressor saturator. Great on an effects, uh, I'm sorry, a, a mix bus or a master bus here. And it, and it can be really aggressive sometimes. So I would, let's put on a piano actually. I have it right here on my piano. Let's take a listen to... Let's take a listen to the piano right now. I'll solo that and take that off. This is without. Ready? Here's without. I'll pop it in now. Very subtle, very nice actually. And you could really drive this. And carefully, it will distort. If I brought the saturation up, it will introduce some distortion. See that? Hear that? I find that this tri-comp a little goes a long way. You know one of those plugins? We all got one. Well, tri-comp is it. It's kind of a nice little posh layer on top of something where you don't want to be you know, overly aggressive. You don't have to tame too many elements. This can really add what I feel is glue to your sound. That's why I think it does work really great on a instrument bus or master bus. All right, and that is tricomp. Let's leave that on and let's go to the guitar section now, right here. And let's do some chorus. Look at this beautiful, beautiful plugin. I'll take the piano out. Here's without. Now I do have it going to my mix verb. I'll take the uh, reverb off. What I love about choruses is they can actually help smooth sounds, especially guitar sounds. Let's say it was a little bit too aggressive. Let's bring in the chorus now and And this is such an analog looking plug and I love it. You've got your shape section here. A little bit of a delay section. And then your depth. And then what I love here is you can actually create what I was referring to before with some delays. Uh, the spread. If I activate that here and you can now... If I was going on a stereo effects bus, it would spread it more. So, as I mentioned before, you know, a lot of these plugins uh, kind of take the best of their analog counterparts, but add a lot more to it because of the digital advantage that we have today. Now, of course, we have our frequency oscillator here again, and our LFO width, and then we can adjust it to taste chorus and a doubler. This chorus. This is the chorus. Very nice. Let's bring the doubler in again, ready? I kind of like that. Let's bring the reverb in with that. It 
sounds beautiful. And right after that, we have another analog plugin in the family, and that's Rotor. And this one needs no introduction. Clearly, it is a Leslie speaker, and this will affect. It's a rotating speaker, as you can see in the animation here. And you can control these. I haven't used these quite a bit in my lifetime, but I love that I can now, thanks to Studio One Pro and this suite of analog effects that's included. Let's take a listen to this. I have it running right after the chorus. Let's bring this in a little bit. I kind of like that. I know I'm exaggerating some of these parameters for you, but I love it. And again, if you're looking for these tracks, please visit ProducePsychopro.com. It is multi-track session number 26. The artist is Pete Mraz, and the song is Open Up Your Eyes, an amazing, beautiful song that inspires you to want to work with amazing, beautiful plugins like this. So that would be Rotor. I mean, we could get into some of these. We have Slow... Uh, we've got the amp positioning, and I don't know too much about these, but what I do love is that it comes with some really great presets to help you understand. And I, when I come across a plugin like this, that maybe it's a, it's it's a virtual type piece of equipment that I may not have a lot of experience with, I love diving into the the presets in the plugin because the presets will expose me to what a lot of these parameters do. For example, let's go to let's go to Musty Woofer. Oh, that sounds good. Nice. Let's try another one. Frayed Rock. How about Red Needle? Or Slow Max? I like that one. So that would be Rotor here in the family of analog plugins. And these are relatively new, so I definitely recommend if you haven't tried them out yet, dive right in. Now here on the bass guitar, I have inserted, last but not least, Red Light Distortion. This is a distortion plugin. Now distortion plugins are incredibly useful. They could add grit, edge, definition if you will and sometimes yes i actually put them on bass guitars let's listen to our bass guitar here beautiful beautiful bass recorded great let's turn on our red light oh that's the default mode i love it there's a little bit of grind in there and that can add articulation to this instrument in your mix. In fact, let's bring it in the mix. Eyes, and you I'll bypass it on the bass, ready? It's pretty self-explanatory looking at the red light the, the red red light dirt plugin i love the aesthetic of this plugin that crimson red um oh obviously we have our distortion value and our drive these i think you would have to work hand in hand and be kind of like you know while the mix is playing back and less than solo obviously and then you got some high cut and low cuts again so you can see what frequency range you want to add this to. I've always liked that because rather than reaching for an EQ, you can actually use these low and high cut values to help accentuate just the frequency range you want. And that could be an alternate way to getting things to fit in the mix. And speaking of mix, we have a mix knob right here. Let's bring this in the mix. And it's yours and it's mine. Open up your eyes. Ooh, whoa. Isn't 
there. All right, so that's the analog family of plugins. Let's bring them all back for a rounding applause. Uh, to keep a plugin within view, you get this little pin icon here on each one. Watch as I bring in the chorus. You can pin it. It remembers that I had them pinned from before. Here's our rotor. And then of course, we've got tricomp and then our analog delay. And these are all just beautiful. It's so it's a new suite, a new family of analog plugins just waiting for you to discover it and use and take advantage of. I wanted this to be an introduction to these plugins because I'm pretty excited about them. And I think you should be as well. My name's Carlo Libertini and the best way is to always find out for yourself. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share, and subscribe.